Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to online worship at Sedge Garden United Methodist Church. I'm Justin, and grateful to bring a little greeting here. You're watching this because I am right now quarantined to the parsonage with our kids, and Melissa is still in isolation. Uh, we are so grateful. I am so grateful for all of you who are stepping up to serve, to preach, to read scriptures. Uh, to sing all of that. So as we gather for worship today in our homes in the midst of a pandemic, I invite you to pray. I invite you to read with us, to sing with us, every bit of that. The kids and I will be watching online through the TV, and uh, we are thrilled to join together for worship in this way. Uh, know this, that everything we're doing in the midst of this pandemic, we are putting at the very forefront the health and the safety of our community. That includes you. 
That includes all of our servants. That includes our staff. And so uh, we continue to adjust and make new changes to every bit of that. If you ever have a question what the current or the latest thing is, you can find that on our website or call our church office. So very grateful that you are with us today. Uh, may the Lord open our mouths and may we always declare praise to Him. In Jesus' name, amen. You're trying to feel the same old holes inside. There's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain to take. You feel hard. He's a way to make. You need freedom. I say it. He's a prison check. You say it. Good morning, Garden Kids. Happy Sunday. Wherever you are, stand up, turn around, and sit down. I just can't drop them. And now we're together. Awesome. It's so good to be with you for worship this morning. Um, and we are wrapping up our study of grace because I have another thing that I want to tell you uh, before we move on to our next uh, topic. So, we have been talking about grace as a gift, and all month we have been giving gifts. But when I think about gifts, I often think of Christmas and my birthday, and I think about all the things that I want, right? A new toy or a new game, or maybe I want something new for my kitchen, or maybe I want something new to play with in the yard, right? Things that I want. I don't always think about things that I need, right? Nobody likes getting socks for their birthday, right? Nobody likes getting, uh, here's one in my house. Nobody likes getting the fruit in their stocking at Christmas, they want the toys. They want the candy. And that's because when we think of gifts, we think of things that we want. But grace is a gift that we, that we need. We want it too, but we need grace. And I'm going to tell you why. Way back in the very beginning, 
in the book of Genesis, we learned that God created a man. And what was his name? Adam. Adam. God created man. So here's my little bubble guy. Okay. And God created Adam and then he created Eve to hang out with God. That's what they were created to do, to just hang out with God and, and be in relationship with him and walk with him and talk with him. Okay. And one day in the garden, Eve, she was tempted by a serpent and she ended up giving in to what the, the serpent tempted her to do. And she ate the fruit. And then she offered the fruit to Adam and they were disobedient. So I'm going to write disobedient. They did not follow what God had asked them to do. So they had sin in their life. And that's when sin entered the world and we became separated from God. And so it, it, the result of that was that man was in one place and God was in another. And we call that place heaven. Right. So we have heaven, we have man, and they're not together anymore. As a matter of fact, as long as we have sin, you can't get to heaven. Mm. And Adam and Eve went on to have sons and, and they had sin. You know what their sin was? Hate, and murder, Ooh, jealousy. I'm going to write those on here. But then there were even more people. And they had sin. What What are some other sins that we might have, Corwin? Um, like killing. That's the whole. Okay, I wrote bad. murder. That is pretty bad. What else do we have? Stealing. Stealing. What about lying? Yeah, lying. I'm gonna put that on there. Bullying. Yeah. What about being disrespectful to your parents? Oh my goodness, we've got. So much. This one didn't even fit on his body. Because it's he's filled up with sin. There were so many sins. Look at my poor person. He's filled up with sin. And as long as there's sin, we cannot get to heaven. There's a big X. We cannot get to heaven. But God really loves us. And he really wanted us to be with him. So one day, he sent his son. And his son had a gift. Here's my other bubble guy. And who do we think this guy is that God sent? Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus came with a gift, the gift of grace. The difference between us and Jesus is that we have sin. And the Bible tells us everybody has sin. And I don't know which one of these is your sin or if you have a different one. But everybody has sin. Jesus has no sin. So Jesus can get to heaven, right? That's where he lives. That's where he came from. It's where he went back to. It's where he's going to take us someday because of the gift of grace. When Jesus came, we learn at Easter that he took the consequence, the punishment for all of our sin. So guess what? You get to start over. When he gave the gift of grace... I was dying again. We were dying. And then we were brand new. So when you receive the gift of grace, all those red, ugly sins that, that covered your body and filled you up, they go away. And now there's no big X between you and heaven. There's only Jesus. Because with the gift of grace, the gift we need, we can get back to God. Pretty <laughs> awesome, huh? That's the best I gift ever. That's the best gift ever, isn't it? Yes, the gift of grace, the best gift you could receive. So let's say a prayer. Dear God, there are just hardly any words to express how thankful we are that you thought enough of us to create a way because without you, we are covered in sin. We are dirty and broken and we are completely unable to get back to you. But with your son and the gift of grace, we get to start over. We get to be clean. We get to be new. We get to be pure. But most importantly, God, we get to be with you. 
And so we thank you for the gift of grace, the gift we need. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Garden Kids, you have a great week. Bye. Good morning, Sage Garden. Hope you're having a great Sunday. Just want to send out a quick reminder. Uh, we are utilizing several resources to try to stay connected with you despite the need for physical distancing. Uh, we're still utilizing our phone tree. Uh, we're sending out lots of emails and we're actively uploading information on the church website. Please use these resources so you can stay connected with us. And if any of these are not making their way to you or you're not actively receiving information in one of these modalities, please contact the church office We'd like to get you connected. Uh, secondly, I just want to say a big thank you. I want to say a big thank you to you. Uh, this is directly in reference to my message last week regarding tithing and offering and, and really your continued support of several ministries that our church engages with. Um, don't want to go into too much detail. I want to steal their thunder. But the youth were able to still have a mission week last week. And that only happened because of several ministries that we support inside our church. Uh, had those ministries not been operating still, we would not have had the opportunity to do the work that we did. Uh, I'm going to allow the youth to share more about this in the next couple of weeks. Uh, also, quick reminder, another great example of this. In a couple of weeks, we'll have our virtual vacation Bible school. Yes, we're still going to have a VBS. Uh, we're going virtual because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But again, just another great example of a ministry that your continued support allows to happen. And so again, on behalf of uh, the youth and behalf of Amanda, myself, and the rest of the staff at this church, we say thank you for your continued support. I hope you all have a great rest of the Sunday. Take care.
The scripture for today comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 8 through 30. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold and that whoever does not fall down in worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of your providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They never serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, for these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God who we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us but from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He offered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, tied firmly, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men when you tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, perfects, governors, and royal advisors crowned, crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor a hair on their head was singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rub rubble. 
for no go other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Good morning. My name is Sarah Petrowski. I'm a youth here at Sedge Garden. I would like to thank everyone for the opportunity to preach again. Thank you, Emily, for reading the scripture. As mentioned in the scripture, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego took part in a peaceful protest to defy the king. In the U.S. today, peaceful protests are often overshadowed by violent ones. Violent protests is not the way to go. You can't fight violence with violence. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew this. They peacefully defied the king, and from the outside, it looked like that brought them to their deaths. They were willing to die for their faith. However, in the U.S. today, we don't have to worry about that. We have the freedom of religion. We never have to worry about physically being thrown into a fire. However, life can feel like a fire. The thing about fire is you get burned. From a young age, children are taught not to play with fire because no one wants to get burned. The thing about burns is they're unpredictable. You can never determine when you're going to get burned. These three men were willing to go into that fire knowing that God would be with them. And he was. The fourth figure, it's never quite clear who it was, but I always like to think of it as an angel of God. This angel of God was physically with the men in, these, in this fire, and it brought them through to the other side. In life, we can't see angels beside us, but God sent us the Holy Spirit. Through all these fires, we have the Holy Spirit. Right now, we're facing a lot of fires. First, a global pandemic practically pressed the pause button on all of our lives. Then, social unrest attempts to destroy us from the inside out. It kind of feels like we're in a fire. And right now, we're just trying not to get burnt. It feels like the world is so against itself, and yet every day, the sun rises and it sets. Some days it rains, some days it's dry. The world keeps turning, no matter what humans do. We seem so small and insignificant. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego seem so small and insignificant, and yet God saved them from the fire. He'll save us from the fires, too. He tells the sun to rise. He tells the sun to set. He brings rain when the land is dry. The world keeps turning because of God. And we're still here because of God. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in that furnace, he was with them. He's with us always in our fires. When they peacefully violated the order by the king, God was with them. Without God, they never would have went into the fire. But without God, they never would have gotten out. It's almost ironic. But if they never gone into the fire, their faith would have diminished. When they came out of the fire, not only were they stronger in their faith, the people around them were stronger in their faith. And God saved them from the fire. Because he's in control, not humans. It was a situation where it feels like they had lost all control. King Nebuchadnezzar had, had sentenced them to their death. And yet, God was in control. In our own fires, God's in control, though we don't always acknowledge that he is. Therefore, everything we do, we should do first for God, then for human hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not afraid to go into that fire, because they knew God would be with them. Isaiah 41 verse 9 is one of my favorite verses, and it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. Because when God is with us, we shouldn't be afraid of this broken world. Fear came into factor when sin came into factor. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge, which was the first sin, the fall of man, then they became afraid. Fear happens because of sin. Bowing down to the golden idol in Daniel would have been a sin. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not sin. They worshipped their god. They worshipped the god of all. So they weren't afraid. They didn't fear death. 
which is one of the things we fear most. And right now, it seems super easy to be afraid. Afraid of all the violence and the injustice facing the world. Afraid of this virus, that you'll get it yourselves or that someone you're close to will get it. Pastor Justin and his wife Melissa being exposed to this virus really hits close to home. But all fear does is get in the way of our ability to see God. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been afraid, they would have died in that furnace. Yet they didn't, because they trusted God with all their hearts. Fear stands between us and God, but God overpowers fear. It's like an invisible barrier called fear. But the thing about invisible barriers, they're just in your mind. They're imaginary. And especially in a fire, it's really easy to be afraid. But guys, especially in a fire, God is with you. We go through fires to come out stronger on the other side, to come out stronger in our faith. And right now, it doesn't seem like there's an end to this fire we're facing right now. But one day there will be. We'll walk out of this fire stronger than we were. Because God is with us. God overpowers our fear God will not leave us or forsake us. And that's the one thing we can hold on to during this time, is God. He is the only constant in our lives. He forgives us for our sins, for our fear. And he's always there. He's what gets us through this fire. He's what gets us through all of our fires. Because when God's there, we don't have to worry about being burned. As we close, let us pray. Gracious and powerful God, thank you for everything you've given us. Thank you that you are with us in the fire and help us to live into that. Help us to know that you overpower our fear, that you are greater than the fires we're facing today. Help us to go out this week unafraid, to live into our faith in you, to trust you through these fires. In your son's name I pray, amen. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. At no point of reverence, you spoke to the dark, fleshed out the wonder. As you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. The vapor of your breath, the planets form. The stars were made to worship, so alive. I can see your heart.
Thank you. 